How's it going, Yankee fans? My name is Alex with my co-host here, Nick Nielsen, and today we're discussing Jose Quintana, who the Yankees reportedly have interest in. Now, interesting pitcher here. Um, they've hit the pause button on Luis Castillo. There are reports that Frankie Montas is still obviously on their radar, but Jose Quintana is an interesting pitcher that we want to discuss, a lefty um, you know, this is a guy who is having a resurgent 2022 season, definitely playing above expectations based on the last four years. He was phenomenal with the Chicago White Sox between 2012 and 2016, but that was a long time ago. He pitched over 200 innings in four of those five seasons, but now he's having kind of an interesting season where the Yankees could say, you know, if we don't want to go for Castillo, if we don't want to go for Montas, we could give up far less for Jose Quintana. They have a great relationship uh, with the Pittsburgh Pirates. Maybe they do like a, a, a dual deal with Quintana and David Bednar, but you know, let's talk about Quintana today uh, before, you know, we jump into any of these lucrative, exciting package deals. But Nick, before we dive into it, how are you doing today, my friend? I'm good. I'm good. Last night's game, again, it's, last night's game sucked that we lost, you know, but it's it was weird. I think, uh, I forget who tweeted out, but someone tweeted out saying the game didn't really like feel like a big loss. Like, I don't really feel like that was a huge loss, in my opinion. I know the Mets are a great team. Don't get me wrong. But what? But playing that game yesterday, we got beat by like Eduardo Escobar, and the balls were clearly juiced because Rob loves to do it for the big games. Um, I'm not too. I'm not too worried about it. it. It was like a bad. It wasn't a great look, but I was. Oh, Ron the Don, dude. What can't he do? That diving play to cover JD's ass and Hicks's ass awesome. on that was amazing. Amazing. It was better. Uh, Gabe tweeted saying some are calling it better than Jeter's flip play. That was me. That's me. I'm one of I'm, I'm I'm them. I'm the people, but I don't know. I'm excited for today's game as well. Even if Domingo's on the bump, this is why I wouldn't mind Quintana. Cause if we're going to be having him or Domingo, I think it's not even a question of the doubt going forward. <laughs> yeah. I mean, look, Domingo is, I just don't get why they keep throwing him out there against really great teams. Like at least build his confidence a little bit against lesser opponents. Um, you know, I think JP Sears has done enough to deserve the start, but at this point, you know, when you're trying to pick between Sears and Herman, you're kind of in a spot where you kind of need starting pitching support, and that's why Jose Quintana is a guy that we should talk about. And you know, this mm -hmm. year, 3.70 ERA, uh, 3.77 xFIP with 97.1 innings pitched. Uh, strikeout rate is down significantly, 7.86 strikeouts per nine, but he's giving up uh, a low since 2014 of 7.4 percent home run to fly ball ratio 72 72 percent left on base rate and a 45 percent ground ball rate so interesting pitcher um there are some good things that he does have you know he usually utilizes a four seam fastball curveball change up and sinker his fastball us usage is at 35 percent curveball at 26 percent um if you're looking at the metrics of each pitch his curveball probably is his best pitch Opposing hitters are hitting 206 against it with a 31% whiff rate and 22.2% put away rate with 28 strikeouts over 102 at bat. So, you know, this is a guy who is generating a lot of production with his curveballs, four seam fastball at 91 miles an hour. Again, he's a lefty, so he does not a high velocity pitcher. Good location, though. When you're looking at him, um, I feel like he's only two or three performances away from, you know, bad performances away from suddenly becoming a average to below average starting pitcher. Like he's he has a 370 RA, but like a couple of bad performances would skyrocket that, you know what I mean? And like, if when you're in pinstripes, if you don't have that mental game, look, he's pitching for the pirates for goodness sakes. They're not yeah, a good team. The you come to the Yankees, baseball, arguably. right? So you come to the Yankees when, when the leverage and everything is so much more at the, it, the intensity is increased. The probability of you failing is also increased. If we've seen through Joey Gallo, I don't trust Jose Quintana to be a legitimate pitcher for us during the postseason. Based on the the metrics of the last couple of years, he just hasn't been good. Having a resurgent season on the worst team in baseball that does not prove to me or does not justify that he can be relied on. Uh, Nick, what is your perspective on that? I mean, you just you just hit the nail on the head right there. Like I couldn't have put it any better. Um, you look at his last. You look at even his July pitching stats, and you take away the start against the. <laughs> Miami Marlins, in which he threw seven shutout innings. Mind you, this was the Marlins without Jazz Chisholm, so they're just completely useless right now. Um, but before that, he went five and gave up six to the Rockies, went four and a third, gave up four to the Brewers, and then went five against the Yankees and only gave up a run. Um, that was the day that he, like, carved against us, and I was like, how the hell is this happening? Uh, but I'm not – it's not like I'm not like a – he'd be a good pitcher to get because I don't think he'd cost a lot of prospects at all. Like you'd probably give up like a 25 to 30 prospect in your system because Quintana is on the last year of his deal. He's 33 and his peripherals aren't great. Like you look at his baseball savant page and he's basically bang average or below average in everything except the average exit velocity and the chase rate. 
So I got to give him like credit that he's doing some things well this year. And he has figured it out, especially after the past couple of seasons that were, I'm not going to say bad because they weren't like awful, you know, but he's like a four or five in a rotation. Like, that's the thing. I don't want the Yankees to be pursuing Quintana thinking, hey, we don't need to get Castillo because we got Jose Quintana. And it's like, no, that's the furthest thing from the truth. Because while, yes, it'd be nice to get Quintana, and honestly, it'd be nice to have him for the depth, and especially in September when we want to rest guys like Monty, Cole, Nestor. Maybe we do them on like every six days then. That'd be nice when we have Quintana. But I don't want Quintana pitching in October for this team because he's honestly like Jamison Tyone. Like, I think that they're just a toss up for who I'd rather have right now. And that's not a big improvement for this team. But also, we wouldn't lose anything big. So it's like, okay. I understand why we'd go out and get him. It helps supplement some injuries, help the bullpen struggles a little bit. Hopefully he could give us five, six innings a start, and then we move on from there. But I do not want this to be the Yankees pitcher. <laughs> yeah, look, I mean, we need, if we're going to win a World Series this year, Quintana's not going to be the one that pushes us toward that goal. It's going to be a Luis Castillo. It's going to be a Frankie Montas. This is literally a last resort, okay? Like, Jose Quintana is a last resort acquisition that, we don't get Castillo. We don't get Montas. And you're like, okay, we have a good relationship with the Pirates. Let's go out and get at least get somebody that's pitching well that's going to be cheap that we don't have to give up a lot of prospects for. And then we'll, maybe we'll go all in on Ian Happ or we'll go all in on Soto or whoever it might be. Yeah, so, did you see what you Jeff know, looking, Passon said today what about the Juan Soto rumors? He said, uh, and I quote, he was, uh, it said, uh, Santa Claus is not real. Sorry to say to the, like, sorry to like say, but the Yankees being in on Soto is very real. Um, and he said that we have a better shot and we're more in than the Dodgers are, which I think is pretty nuts. Granted, I still think that the two favorites, in my opinion, for Soto are the Cardinals and Padres, especially because the Nationals said they don't want to attach any big contracts to it to like weigh down their prospect return. But the Yankees have what it takes to get Soto. And I love to hear him pass and say that. So maybe we do just get Quintana as like, a here's a pitcher we're going to throw in there and go all in for soda, which I would be a hundred percent fine with. Cause at the end of the day, it'd be like, great. Like when they reveal them, like coming to Yankee stadium, everyone will be there for soda. And then Quintana will just be like, woo. Yeah. I mean, look, if, if the Yankees are truly in on Soto and Passan is saying it, who I very much trust, then, you know, there is definitely a real uh, situation under, you know, kind of unfolding behind the scenes right now. The question is how much do they want? I keep hearing that the Cardinals are involved. Uh, this is this would be the biggest deal we've seen probably in a very very he long just time. Said maybe that. So ever. This is a fireside Yankee bomb here. Breaking news alert. He, he said this like yeah, 15 I mean, minutes ago, 20 minutes ago. <laughs> did he respond to somebody? <laughs> so I think that? it was on a podcast. He was on a podcast. I was on a podcast. Okay, yeah, I, okay. Forget, yeah, I gotta I mean, find look. which podcast it was. But um, he was he was like talking with, and he was like, yeah, they're very in on Soto, and that's good because they have the prospects. He said that they have Volpe, they have Jason. He's like they'll probably lose both but they could do it. So I'm, I'm very intrigued now because if it comes down to the Yankees just didn't want to give up one of those guys, I'm going to be a little mm -hmm. bit pissed. But if it comes down to the Nationals just chose a better package, I'm like, all right, whatever. Okay, go get Castillo. But getting Quintana would be nice to have because it'd be nice to have a guy that could at least get you five or six innings and you wouldn't give up much. So it's, it's, it's tough because if this is the last move the Yankees make, that's great. But if this is the first move the Yankees make, that's not great. Yeah, I would say uh, that probably makes a lot of sense to me. I mean, look, if you get Soto, you're pretty much giving any any hope, giving up any hope of getting a starting pitcher because yeah. you're getting, you're going to have to give up everything for Soto. So if the Yankees really feel confident that their starting pitching can help can do the job during the postseason, they really feel confident about Garrett Cole, uh, Nestor, and Jordan Montgomery or Tyone, whoever it might be, or Severino. If they feel good about them, then you go with Soto. But if you don't feel good about them and you think that the pitching is going to be the, your downfall, you got to make a really difficult decision. I mean, yeah. the Miami Marlins, uh, Jim Bowden, you know, said yesterday that Miami, Mar Miami Marlins are like looking to trade everything. Or actually, I think it was John Heyman who said that everybody but Sandy Alcantara is available. So Joey you can Pablo go out, Lopez. you can get Joey. Yeah, you get Pablo Lopez, you get uh, Joey, Wendell, Joey Wendell, you can get Anthony Bass. I mean, even Jazz is probably available if they were yeah. for the right price. Like you could He's get, injured. you could probably walk away. Jazz, you could get right. him, and you get him. It'd be like the, it'd be like when the Red Sox got Schwarber last year, where they got him when he was on the IL and he missed like two months, but when he came back, like he was a god. So maybe we get, if we got Jazz, I would lose my mind. 
I wouldn't be mad because we get him and he's injured. I'd be really, really happy because we got him when he's injured. So we probably got him for a little bit less than he'd usually go for. And in theory, he'd be back for the postseason because it was, I believe, a six to eight week injury about two weeks ago. So it could line up. But yes, there are teams out there that are doing fire sales and the Yankees should be in on all of these fire sales. The Detroit Tigers yesterday came out and said that everyone is available on their team, including young ace Tariq Skubal. Now, I could be crazy and you could say I'm blasphemous for saying this, but I would 1000% take Tariq Skubal over Luis Castillo. I think he's the better pitcher. I think he's the better pitcher for the long run. And this could also be crazy, but I don't think we'd get we'd have to give up as much for Skubal as we would for Castillo because of the fact that the ti- the Tigers also said they know that Castillo and Montas are the one two guys on the market right now. So they're expecting the teams that can't get them to trickle back and want Skubal. So what that says to me is, all right, they're going to have a high asking price, but then lower it when they realize, wow, everyone wants Castillo. No one wants Tariq right now. So we should just slide in there, offer Elijah Dunham, Trey Sweeney, maybe Roger Arias if you really want to, and then one of your top five guys. And then boom, Tariq Skubal is a Yankee. Like, come on. Yeah. His, I mean, his lefty there. sinker. <laughs> There's a lot to like. There's a lot to like. Um, I, I really am curious to see what the Yankees do here. This is going to be an interesting couple of days. Uh, we'll keep you guys updated as always. We'd love to hear your thoughts on Jose Quintana and you know his approach, his resurgence season. If you would be happy with if they acquired him, if you would be pissed off because he's not necessarily what we need right now. We need a guy who's an elite ace. We need a guy who's going to be that one-two punch to Garrett Cole come October yes. that's going to be able to shut down Houston. We need a guy who's going to be able to perform well against Houston. Yeah, Quintana's um, more of a that... Twins or a Mariners or an Orioles right. if they want move. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. He's a guy that you can throw out there against at like okay teams and he'll beat them, but against the Astros, against the Mets, you know, as we see, no, no trust. um yeah, I don't trust him at all. So there that's my kind of opinion and Nick agrees with me on that one. So guys, I'd love to hear perspectives below on the YouTube comments. Make sure to like and subscribe as always and we'll catch you guys on the next Fireside Yankees video. Mm-hmm.